Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Lotus Justice again with the last part three in this series about status corrections. And I was going to talk today uh, about the paradox that we're in and just kind of culminating uh, the, you know, the, the information that I've tried to bring forth in this series. <clears throat> and it kind of ties into a comment a Stephen Z had on part two where he talks about not wanting to appear in their administrative uh, uh, forums. <clears throat> Notice they're not courts, they're forums. Where he brings about the concern about appearing as uh, the man and trying to resolve these during using their administrative process. Well, there's a couple of things in that. If you settle with them in using their administrative process, <clears throat> you are admitting to their personal jurisdiction. And that means that you are a thing under their Roman concept, and you are not deemed a flesh and blood man or woman, uh, live, resurrected in the flesh. I don't care what settlement they offer you, you are still deemed a slave and a thing because you've not challenged their personal jurisdiction over you. So in taking settlement, using the administrator, you know, the, the magi on the bench, with the plaintiff uh, next to you who is in the mask of self, I'm sorry, the mask of state, um, and he's not the man, he's the mask of state. When you take that settlement, you are accepting their claim and you're accepting all of the presumptions that come with them. So I don't care what you walk in there with, I don't care what you say, if you accept a settlement using their forum in bankruptcy, which is what they're in, then you are accepting to be within their jurisdiction. So that is a fact of law and law statute. So, in the previous um, video, I talked about the concept of proprietor personam, and this was the question that Stephen Z kind of had, well, you know, why do you want to put on a mask? A man should have to put on a mask. Well, when you're walking into a fictio, and the plaintiff, a man, is wearing the mask of state, <clears throat> in order to achieve equity, and to actually be above that mask of state, because the man in the mask of proprietor personam, in the mask of all men, is above the mask of state because the mask of men, prior personam, created that state that they presume to be operating in. Now, the word personam is uh, confusing to some people, but let's hearken it back to in, in Greek theater, you would put on the persona, the mask of the role of the actor. So the actor wears a mask, a persona, personification. It's the personification of the... Um, the person that is the subject of the play. It's not the man. The man acting it is not the character. Okay? The man acting it is putting on the personum of the character. So when you walk into their forums, which are de facto, okay, they are not courts of law with grants of law. And I discussed this <clears throat> a little bit at length in my reply to Stephen Z on the last video, and it would maybe be advisable for some people to read that, but you have, again, as I've stated in previous videos, your government is vacant. What you have in its stead is a corporate overlay, a foreign jurisdiction corporate overlay. That is not part of our republic. It is a foreign corporate jurisdiction by the Pope and the World Bank and all those people abrogating our debts because we're belligerent and we're insane and running around fighting each other. And that, that whether or not they created the, the precepts of the Civil War, which I believe they did, I think that, that the facts and records on the case <clears throat> prove that, though they themselves, th those individuals, those foreign agents, created the circumstances, we, we bit the hook, you know, we took the bait, and we fought each other. And... And again, I've spoken about that, that that's what they're trying to get everyone to do. Because then they can go and say, well, we're in charge of you all now because we're the only sane ones here. We're the bankers and we're sane. And you're, you're acting unlawfully and killing each other and rebellion. And you're interfering with commerce. And commerce must always be preserved. Well, their commerce anyway. I mean, they act like if they weren't around, we wouldn't have commerce. I don't know. Last time I looked, a lemonade stand doesn't need a banker. Although they're trying to make it so a lemonade stand has to have a permit and need a banker. Need them. Need their system. But... Commerce exists between us, the common people, regardless of whether their overseeing, quote, state is there. 
So that in itself is a, a moot argument, and it's a false argument. We don't need their state to do anything. It's a matter of us willfully accepting their authority of state, which, pursuant to our standard of law, they have to have in order to be seen as the lawful governance. So when you walk into their forum, which are de facto, again, your republic seats are vacant, and until they are restored, there is no true courts of law. These are private jurisdictional banks that have been sent there by the bankers to abrogate, hypothecate, and subrogate your chattels and estates to satisfy what they say you owe them in bankruptcy from pff, however long ago, hundreds of years. I mean, before the Civil War, there was a bankruptcy brought. I think we're on, I don't know, I think a friend and I counted, it was like six bankruptcies. So, and it's six bankruptcies to the same groups. We just keep re, you know, it's kind of like when you refi your house to pay off your credit cards. So, but the initial argument was, well, why do we owe you uh, debts for lands that you never owed? Okay, that's the argument here. You don't own my, my body, and you don't get to claim my body as an a surety for some debt you think I owe. And if you do think I owe you the debt, then let's go to the court, and you can prove your play, claim, uh, complaint or claim, whichever one. But what you have is, is vacant government seats with corporate officers of a foreign jurisdiction sitting there pretending to be your government. So if you go into these pretend uh, forums and surrender and give them settlement, uh, you are surrendering to their jurisdiction. I don't care what paperwork you carry in. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. If you allow that guy in the black robe, who's a magi in a Pharisee's robe, to authorize whatever settlement. Let's say you even go in and say, I'm the settler and blah, 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 blah. And he goes, well, okay, that's good. Well, he authorized the settlement, so who's really the trustee there? He is. She is. You still haven't acquired the trustee, the executorship, or anything. You're the beneficiary and the creditor being subjected to a foreign occupying trustee and executor, okay, of your states and shadows because you're too insane to handle them yourself, to handle the affairs yourself. In the state that I dwell in right now, uh, the law pursuant to what makes you competent, there's only one competency uh, test in the state of Ohio, and that is whether you know where your assets are. So do you know where your assets are? I know where my assets are. I've gone over this before. You don't even know you have assets. You don't know who's hypothecating, abrogating, and subrogating them. You don't know what their titles are. You don't know that the guy over there that's a plaintiff is actually uh, trying to steal the executorship. That's what the claim is for. He's declaring you insane. And you go about there and, 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 and actually agree with him by your actions that you're insane. And when you say you're insane and he says, I'm the executor of that flesh, that person's insane, the, the magi, the trustee goes, you know what, uh, Mr. Executor, want to be executor, I'm going to agree with you and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take their executorship away. And because it's a probate court, it's probate. Most all claims are in probate. I don't care if they call them criminal or not. They're probating bankruptcies. Okay. And you could in the state I dwell in, you can I can even prove that in actions from the 1960s, where they moved, uh, they changed the constitution to create the bar union to create a monopoly, and then moved all the probate judges up to the common pleas courts. They're probates. They're probating your debts and your body is part of their claim if you're insane. So the plaintiff, be it a criminal or civil claim, if it's the state of Ohio, or is coming in saying, this guy over there in this vacant vessel is insane. And he's not taking care of his shadows in the states. And he is um, not, uh, he's damaging his vessel. He's a crom criminal. He's a drug addict, whatever. Uh, he's fighting his fellows. And we need to take, uh, we need to seize the vessel. And I want to be the executor of that. I'm, I'm claiming that I'm, I'm going to be the executor. And then there's a thing that they do called parole evidence. Now, parole evidence is uh, a term. Uh, much like parole, uh, where parole itself, when you go on parole, is a military term. However, parole evidence is a term in the law of equity. Now, parole evidence is evidence that they get off the record ex parte, you know, when you go talk to a parole officer, or 
When, after the, you come into the court, the magi, the judge, goes, would you like a counselor, an attorney, a free attorney? And you go, oh, yeah, I would really like one because I don't know what's going on. And, and he goes, well, I'm going to assign you this public defender, okay, the defender of the public, and uh, you can go over in that room over there and, and have a little private counsel, and um, when you come back, we'll settle this this uh, disagreement. You're like, oh, okay, great, thing. thank you very much, you're very so kind. And you go over there and you go into this room, and mind you, that public defender is on the state payroll, and he is a bar member union, or union member, and you go and have a ex parte private conversation. That's called parole evidence. Parole evidence is when you have secret conversations, okay? Much like on a deathbed. This is when it's, it's an example that's used a lot in the equity claims of the old. Uh, I go in and I talk to my dying uncle, and I'm the only one in the room, and he blah, 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 close the door. I come out and go, oh, poor uncle's dead. And you know, the last words were, I get everything. Guess what? In the law of equity, that's parole evidence, and it can be brought, even if there is a will. It can be brought and averred in an equity claim, and I can get all of my uncle's money. That's called parole evidence. And so when you go into that little room and you talk to an agent of the state off the record, or you go and talk to a parole officer before your hearing for sentencing, the state then brings that forth in parole evidence and uses it against you and declares you insane. Because when you go talk to an attorney, you are declaring yourself insane. When you ask for additional counsel, you're saying, in their mind, in their paradigm, you are saying, I am incompetent to defend myself. I don't know where my estate is. I don't know where my assets are. And I need one of your union members to, to defend me my, in my insane, immoral, vacant vessel self. So parole evidence is used against you, and that is a claim in equity. So when you go get parole evidence, you come back to the administrator, the magi, and he goes, did you speak to your counsel? And you go, yes, we had this private little conversation over in that little room. And he goes, oh, did you now? So, counselor, Mr. Attorney so-and-so, so-and-so, what say you? And he goes, oh, we're going to plead not guilty. Well, again, as I've talked about, not guilty, guilty, no contest. There's other pleas. But the not guilty assumes jurisdiction. So what you just did is you just went in there and gave parole evidence that his that this attorney is going to now collude with the plaintiff to make the plaintiff the executor in the claim. You've lost your executorship of your own shadows and estates. Okay? You've declared yourself insane by accepting a state attorney. An attorney that operates for the foreign jurisdiction. So see, it's all a big paradox and a catch-22, and nothing is as it seems, and it's all innately and inherently designed to steal your substantial rights and to abrogate, to take away your right to abrogate, uh, hypothecate, and subrogate your own debts as the executor who is in charge of the trustee. Okay, so now you have your parole evidence, which you've given by talking to an agent for the state who's free, so you're not even, he's not even contracting with you. He's contracted with the state. You didn't even pay the guy, okay? He's not even there to operate on your behalf. Regardless, no attorney is there to operate on your behalf. It even says in most uh, jurisprudence books that attorneys are there and their first, their first duty is to the preservation of the state. They are licensed agents of the state. The state is authorizing them in the licensures to operate on their behalf. So every time you get an attorney, every time you surrender your substantial rights, you declare yourself insane, and you give him the capacity to collude with his brothers in the union to steal your wealth. That's the fact of the case. That's the coup, okay? So until the republic is restored, I don't care what you take into those courts. I don't care what you say. I don't care what paperwork you have. As long as there's a magi on the bench, he's the trustee, and that guy over there is the executor. That's a fact. That's a fact of law and law of statute. So if, until you understand the paradox, the catch-22 that you're in, Whatever you bring forth is going to be worthless. I don't care if you go, hey, look what I got done. He gave me a settlement of 50 bucks instead of 300. Well, you still settled with a foreign jurisdiction and you surrendered your rights because you willfully contracted with a foreign entity and a foreign agent, which makes you trading with the enemy 
and it makes you having committed sedition and treason. And since you colluded with everyone in the room to undermine the republic laws and dealt with a foreigner, you just committed high treason, okay? So if you don't understand the paradox, that's what you're doing every time you go into those courts and you don't aver propria personam and demure. If you don't challenge their jurisdiction, you're committing sedition and treason and you're undermining the rights of everybody else in this governance, under their governance, and in this nation, and in this country. That's a fact. You are perpetuating and promoting a foreign occupation by paying a tithe to a foreign occupation. Sounds like an indulgence to me. You're paying for your sin. It's a Martin Luther religious thing. They're, they're, they're just happen to be, you know, in most people's minds, the, the church of Satan telling you you got to pay a tithe to them. And that's what you're doing. You're paying a tithe to Baal. Those are Baal worshipers. Those are Satan worshiping. Look at the court. Pews. Magi Pharisees robes. Okay? You're, you're Baal worshiping. When you pay a tithe to Baal, are you under the law of God, the common law that's a bird in our... No, you're not. And therefore, you're under their jurisdiction. So anytime you take a settlement, I don't care if you aver that you're the flesh and blood man, they're like, yeah, 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 he's crazy. Well, he's rambling. And then your attorney goes, yeah, yeah. They're looking at each other. He's crazy. He's proven himself crazy. He thinks he's alive. He just declared himself insane in a thing. That's how insane he is. He's not sure what he is. You don't know the law. You don't understand the paradox. You are abrogated and hypothecated and subrogated by this foreign union, okay? So, I don't know if that explains the paradox, people, but there's even a bigger paradox called infictio, which I discussed in the last video. Infictio is a presumption by its own definition, look it up, that the defendant will never overcome. You cannot overcome it walking in there and accepting their infictio standing. It's designed, it's a paradox. If you walk into their paradox and you operate within it, you're always going to be in it. You can't operate in their paradox. And the only standing and the only actions that remove you from their paradox is a demure and taking on the mask of the man, the mask of all men. I am going to operate as the character of all men. I'm not the character of all men. I'm putting on the personification of all men. Just like the plaintiff is the personification of the state. Yeah, there's a flesh and blood talking man there, but he's just as dead as you. He's taken on the personification of the state. That's why he is given voice. That's why his words rate in the law and law statute. He has voice. He is putting on the mask of state. You must put on the mask of selfdom, of the man, of the sovereign. Because the mask of state has nothing it's subordinate to the mask of all men. That's why they put it in the Judiciary Act of 1789. That's why when you go into a forum and say, I'm propria persona, it's not even an option, by the way, in their list. You know, if you go, you want to do electronic filing, you're a pro se litigate, you this or that. In fact, the word executor, you're not even allowed, they, the option of being an executor in a claim is not even there, okay? So they've removed executor and propria personam. They act like propria personam doesn't exist or that propria personam is pro se. It's not. In fact, if anybody can find the root of pro se in Latin, I'd like to see it because I think it's a made-up term just to obfuscate propria personam because I can't find it. It's a, it's a legally made-up word. It's not a law term. And in law, propria personam is not the same as pro se. It even says in their definition, pro se is when you accept jurisdiction and you're operating itself. So you're just your own attorney, which is insane. You know what happens then? The trustee, he listens to you. He goes, ah, ha, ha, you're still crazy and here's my ruling. And that's the settlement as a trustee that I'm going to offer. And your state's going to pay. Your state's still going to pay a tithe. You're not going to get out of here without paying a tithe. One way or the other. Or at least I'll, they, they'll let you out the door. All they want is the jurisdiction. They may even let you out the door without a tithe. But they have your social security number. And they can go get a tithe because you've surrendered to their jurisdiction. You may walk out of there going, hey, I didn't have to pay nothing. Look at how smart I am. You're not smart because you just gave them your social security number. You still accepted their jurisdiction and they'll still go write a bond on you. They'll write a bond on you. They'll write as many bonds as they feel like they want. They'll go on vacation on them. That's their retirement. That's what they do. So you didn't, you didn't do anything. It looks like you did, but you didn't. You think because you're insane that you achieved something. But you didn't. You achieved nothing if you didn't challenge their jurisdiction. 
you surrendered your person your person you 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 surrendered the self to them so you have to go in there and you have to say hey I'm all men operating in a higher moral standing because all men are the ones that gave you that grant of law that you're operating in the seat of fraudulently and de facto and I say you're frauds I say you're failing in your fiduciary responsibilities to defend my shadows and my estates you're failing not only are you failing you're stealing me you're stealing from me you're stealing from the usufruct you're abusing the usufruct you're stealing our children and abusing our children you're stealing unlawfully our lands our, our uh, property in the usufruct you're stealing our body you brought me in here under force and gun that's not law you highway robbed me you hijacked me you kidnapped me you brought me in here with no jurisdiction how did you get me here where do you have standing when I'm the mask of all men and I say you're a fraud and that this guy over here has an unlawful claim against my shadows and estates? He is not the executor. I am. I know where my assets are and I know that he's a fraud and I know you're not the trustee if you accept him. And then if this, if this plaintiff cannot defend his standing to bring a complaint, not a claim, because he doesn't have the standing to bring a claim. He's not a member of this society. He's not a member of this country. He is not. He cannot belong to this republic because he's given up that right pursuant to the lawfully ratified TONA that says he can't have a position of trust or power. He is not a, a member of our state of being. He's foreign, always. They're always foreigners. So he doesn't have any standing except in an international court of claim. Little did you know that when you go in and you settle a traffic ticket, that you're in a private jurisdiction that's bringing settlements for international claims of bankruptcy. And all they're trying to do, and their whole point, is just to get you to surrender to their jurisdiction and pay a little fee if you're dumb enough to think that that's going to save anything, or even walk out of there paying nothing. All they care about is the jurisdiction. All they care about is being able to attach that social security number and laying a claim on it in international law. That's what they do. They write bonds across on your social security number. Because there's a big bank account with that number attached to it. But you don't know it's there. And you don't know how to get to it. And you're not being afforded the right to get to it. And you're ignorant of the fact that it even exists and what the construct of it is and how it became. So, you have to walk in if you want to preserve your rights, your substantial rights, and demure and, and operate in propria persona. And, and then bring a counterclaim and a cross-claim saying, who are you? Because if not, and you talk to an attorney, you're going to give a parole evidence and lose and, and have a claim of equity brought against you and have that guy converted to the executor. And then the trustee is going to just settle it for you on your behalf because you're insane. Because that's, wh that's why you're in, that's why you're in abrogation. You're insane. So they've assigned trustees. So the same unions, the trustee, the executor, all you are is a beneficiary and creditor. If you're smart enough to figure out that you are the beneficiary and creditor pursuant to the Bankruptcy Act of 1889 or 1898, I got it. My, I remember in Mandela that it was 1879. I've been now told that it's 1898, I believe. So when you look it up, look up 1898, the bank check. And there's a section in there about forced bankruptcies and how they create bonds against them. That's what they're doing. Okay, they're creating bonds in forced bankruptcies. Forced bankruptcies. It says that the that the beneficiary and creditor will be brought in and forced to settle bankruptcies. That's exactly what happens every time you go into their foreign jurisdictions. And then the settlement of that bankruptcy, they're going and attaching a claim against the Sustic Trust. And then their master, who's in charge of the bank, goes, hey, all right, we'll pay you. <laughs> you know, I. And then they, they do it with offsets and adjustments. There's no real money anymore. It's all offsets and adjustments. Hopefully we'll go back to gold here soon, which is a real asset, which puts the, the law onto the land again, to the flesh. But until that happens, or until somebody brings a claim in bankruptcy and uh a claim in equity against their fraudulent and deceptive practices in the abrogation and settlement and hypothecation of the bankruptcy, the, their law rules because you guys are going in and settling. You're not even the settler. I mean, you're not even achieving settler status. If there, if okay, if there's a magi in the room, you're not the settler and you're not your own trustee and you're not the executor. As long as there's a magi, because if you were the settler and the trustee, you just you'd get a a bill, you know, a ticket a claim from a from a cop, a corporate agent, and you would go up to a window and uh, 
be able to just write your social security number down and authorize a draw off of it and it would get paid. There'd be no money exchanged. It'd be, you know, just all signature, sigil nature. Where you say, I authorize you to uh, attach my SESTK for $45 or 45 is offsets and adjustment. That's not the case. You, when you go to the window, you're given fee up note, which is in itself a contract, even though that's the only contract we're allowed. But you're still using the banker's script, military rule script. So you're still in their jurisdiction. Now, if you went and you paid with 45 silver dollars, which would be, you know, what, 120 bucks or whatever now, offsets and adjustment, then you might get by and you might be able to counter sue them in international court of law. But the fact that you're going up and you're paying with military script, again, surrenders you to their jurisdiction, you pay the 120 bucks, and they turn around and hypothecate your social security number, which they have because it's attached to your driver's license and yada, yada, yada. Like, for example, in my case, uh, and I, I'm speaking from experience, people, because, you know, I went and did all this, and they still operated outside of the law and statute because they're just criminals. They're not even following statute. You know, I go in and I do all this, and there's even an open conversation where the plaintiff goes, well, we have to get parole evidence. He, it's in the record of my case. They are knowing that in equity law they have to get parole evidence to convert themselves to the executor. They know this. They, are, they may not understand the larger paradigm, but that's what they're being taught in administrative processes. And so what you basically have is a bunch of people are just taught the simulation of process at law, but they're not in law, they're at law, and they're being taught the administrative process that simulates law, looks like law, but really is just private jurisdictional thievery. Okay? That's all it is. So you have to go in and you have to do the propria persona because it sets you in the higher law. And in the mask of selfdom, of man, the flesh, of all men, all men made the state. Therefore, the guy wearing the mask of state must prove to you and upon the bar, because now the bar is, is polluted. You know, their claim is polluted. You're saying, hey, I don't know who you think you are, but I'm the sovereign here, and I'm the guy that operates in all men, and I am the true executor on behalf of all people of the land, and I am saying you're a fraud and you're failing in your fiduciary responsibilities, you trustee, you're failing in your fiduciary responsibilities because you're letting this fraud here come in here and make a claim that he doesn't have standing to make against me. And if you affirm his standing, then he, then you're fraudulent too. And then you've thrown the whole court into a schism, quote, quote, court. The whole forum is now de facto the plaintiff and the magi is now in de facto. And now you flip the court. You've gone from admiralty to common law because they haven't achieved executorship and they haven't achieved personal jurisdiction. And not only have they not achieved that, if he doesn't prove over here this plaintiff, those seven uh, uh, requirements to, to prove standing to bring a claim, one of them is he has to be a victim or he has to produce a victim. There's a lot that they have to produce. If he can't do that, and or if that Magi makes, moves forward without making him do that, then you have established a claim in law and equity against all of them, their whole system and their union. Now, the likelihood is they'll go ahead and go forward because they only know the, the administrative process. They don't understand the law around it. Very few people understand the law that they're trying, to, that they're emulating in, pro, you know, in, in, in a simulation of processes down at these forums. And... So they're probably likely going to go ahead, or if the Magi is learned, he'll get pissed off and go, you're Lola, and he'll start yelling at you and threatening you and all that stuff, and you have to go, I object, I object, I object, provide conclusions, law, findings, and facts, and you have to keep objecting to everything he says, because if you don't object, silence is consent, and he, he'll throw everything at the book at you. They are taught to do this, to get you to, get, to give them, give them by not objecting, by being silent, personal jurisdiction. Remember the assent and consent. They are trained. In their administrative processes and in their judge, they have little meetings and weekend retreats where they literally go and teach these people how to steal from you using admiralty law. They do this. I don't know if they all know that that's what they're doing, but they do do that. It may be presented to them by ruse 
or even say, you have to do this to protect the Union. No, you have to do it to protect their foreign master's interest. It's a very uh, compartmentalized coup. And so very few people know what they're doing. But these judges are trained to say certain things, to do certain things, and you then surrender by assent and consent to their jurisdiction. So I assure you, if you go in and go demure, and I'm proprietor persona, they go, well, okay, this pro se Lenny. You go, no, I object. I said pro per. Well, this pro se, they'll say it every time. They'll say it every time. They will substitute pro per for pro se. They'll even do it in writing. They cannot admit that proprietor persona exists, even though the Judiciary Act establishes that that standing and that uh, pleading from in propria personam is afforded by the creation of the Judiciary Act. So it exists, regardless of whether they accept it or not. So they're likely still going to move forward. But here's the deal. If you go and you do that, you do the count, if you demure, demure counterclaim, cross-claim, and you say, I'm represented prior personam in your writing or in verbally, and you understand what you're doing, and you understand what I'm talking about here, understand that, I should say, if you comprehend what I'm saying here, they can do what they want to do, but at least you've preserved your rights. And you may go down, you may go down flaming, but you've preserved your rights. Look, I spent a year in prison for something I could have paid 50 bucks and gotten out of as long. Literally, that was offered to me. If I had paid 50 bucks, they would have thrown the claim out the door because of the complaint, uh, because they don't have the capacity to bring claims. But they threw, they would have thrown the complaint out the door with a small fee, small fine. But I was unwilling to settle. Because I wanted to preserve my substantial rights, and I wanted to be able to take these guys to international law and bring a claim in equity against them. And that's what I'm doing, and that's what I'm going to do. And I have every right to do that, and they have no standing in law to even defend themselves against it. And the more you get them, like if, you look, if I were to give you and you were to read all the cases that I'm involved in for myself and as appointed lawfully appointed counsel for other people, they go out of their way and prove that they're de facto. They they openly, upon the record, prove that they're unlawful and that they really are just there to maintain control and to maintain an unlawful monopoly for the interest of their masters. And like I said, a lot of them are probably in that position. And uh, whenever they go back and talk to their union people that who they're controlled by, because they have handlers. I've had court cases where there's a handler back in the corner who come and accost us verbally after we have these you know, confrontational demure situations. And go, Yuri, what you're saying is not law. And I'm like, well, yeah, it is. I mean, they're just they're just random people that are there in suits and they're there for the whole term. They're there to monitor whether that administrator can handle me or handle whoever is there literally bringing the law for. So the reason why I say what I say is because you are required to do these things in order to bring the law. You're not there appearing. You're there by special appearance to notice them that they are unlawful. You're operating outside the law, and I'm here to reconcile that fact. In fact, I'm going to demure, and I'm going to be in propria persona, and I'm going to counterclaim and cross-claim you, and now I've reversed the bar, and you're coming from the wrong side of the bar, and now you're in common law. You're required to settle this in common law. In fact, you're required to settle my claim in common law before you can go and get your complaint. Now, that never happens, hardly ever. It should. It's going to with me. I will find a court of law that operates. And if I don't, then I'll come back to all you all and I'll say, all hell's broken loose. There's no remedy relief. I, I know there's no remedy and relief in the state of Ohio for a four-year-old child. I can prove that. I'm going to find out here shortly if there's remedy and relief in the federal system, which funds the unlawful kidnapping of children through Title IV, subsection E, and, and gives the states a tithe for going in admiralty seizing uh, innocent land from parents who aren't, you know, who are vacant and insane. They, they literally, in this state of Ohio, believe that they can come and take a child without warrant or hearing for cause. That is on the record. So if you're not concerned by that construct, that there are states of men in corporate status operating in vacant seats of government, stealing and kidnapping your children as property as uh, unclaimed vessels because their parents are considered lost beyond the scene and saying, if you're not concerned about the state coming and literally stealing children and that children have less of a right than your car, which is Title II, just like your child, if you don't have a problem with that and you want to continue to go in and, and play with these traitors, uh, go for it. I won't be your friend because I consider you a complicit in sedition and treason and the overthrow of the republic. So you go right ahead. But I'm not going to play with these morally reprobate people 
and I'm not going to allow them to have personal jurisdiction over me because I'm morally offended by the way that they run the world. Not just here, by the way they run the world. Because they're stealing children in Australia. They have a private island in Australia that is a children's prison. What the heck do you need a private offshore island where you take children for in Australia? Explain that to me. So when you go in there and you pay that ticket and you talk to those those traders and those people doing who, who are perpetuating a heinous, Satan-worshipping, Baal-worshipping system all over the world. You think about that when you pay that 45 bucks because you're so concerned with your reality, which is not going to be here that much longer, I assure you, because there are far too many people being morally offended at this point in time because they're aware of what's going on. When you go do that because it's too big of a trouble and you just don't want to mess with your life, you think about the fact that when you paid that tithe, you help support a system of de facto... Uh, overseeing foreign administration that's being overlaid over the whole world because our dollar bill is the international trade dollar. It's the international uh, means of commerce. So that means that the system of law that's here is overlaid all over the world. When you go do that, you're perpetuating the tortures and the abuses, the kidnapping, the murder, and the raping and the pillaging of children. So feel free to not listen to what I'm saying. Feel free to settle with a foreign occupation. But know that I, as a sovereign in my actions, in that I will not um, conform to a foreign occupation of reprobate mentality, I will consider you complicit in the coup. And so, because all you're thinking about is yourself. And people who think about themselves are spiritually vacant. Because spiritually vacant people uh, uh, will surrender to tyranny. People of a higher moral upstanding character and standing are offended by such constructs and would never, ever, ever conform to such occupation and such unlawful reprobate behavior. And they definitely wouldn't tithe it, and they definitely wouldn't settle with it. So that's my little tirade on propria persona. I'm trying to show you all how to not surrender your substantial rights. You people asked me how to correct your status and I said first thing is get your morality right okay have have a morality and find them repugnant and once you find them repugnant here in the law the steps you need to take to to sustain your substantial rights I spent a year in prison instead of paying a small tithe to bail and in that year in prison I spent a lot of time in the hole because when I was in prison they kept trying to make me surrender to their jurisdiction as well working forced peonage uh, signing documents that I couldn't be lawfully required to sign, uh, being forced, I was put in the hole uh, for, for refusing mail from an attorney who was trying to solicit me, and uh, which would have given him contract over me. I would have been in contract with him. They put me in the hole for that. They tried to tell me I had to receive mail from him. No, I don't. And I don't have to work for the state that unlawfully incarcerated me against my will, and that doesn't have a standing to bring a complaint or a claim against me. So I spent a lot of time in the hole in a year in prison defending my substantial rights, and I do it again. And I didn't just do it for myself, I did it for everybody, and I'd do it again, because I happen to know that it only takes one. That's what the Bible tells you, that's what everyone tells you, and that's what Sestic Trust Law tells you. It only takes one person to bring a claim and to say that that Sestic and those administrators and the people who created the Sestic, you have to remember that. The Sestic Trust was created during the Civil War. The people who created it had already coup the government in 1809-1812. The people who created that Sestic did not have the authority in the law to, to create it in the first place. They were foreign agents. So it only takes one person to claim that that Sustake is fraudulent. Guess what? That Sustake now runs the whole of the world. All of the monetary units are based upon that Sustake because we're the monetary unit. We have the opportunity for the first time in however many times we've been living this uh, Groundhog Day, tens of thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, I don't know, they find... How many hidden civilizations are underground? How many times do they dig in the ground and dirt and find hammers and rockets 200,000 years below the ground, you know, by the sublimation of the... How many times have we done this? And these people just keep doing it over and over. They're administrators of the earth, right? That's what they say. Well, they're not mine. They're not going to be mine. I'm not going to leave this earth being their slave. And when I go home, when I'm done with this vessel, I'm going home home. I ain't going back in here, this thing. But I'm going to try my darndest to get rid of these reprobate Satan worshippers in the time that I'm here. And it only takes one. Now, I would really like it 
if I could get a whole bunch of you to be doing the same thing I'm doing because we have more than one we have hundreds or hundreds of thousands of people going you're de facto you are in violation of the law you're failing in your fiduciary responsibilities as trustee and and presumptive executors and I'm gonna challenge you as the executor I'm gonna challenge your trustee you go in there and say I'm I'm the lawful executor of my Susticate trust all capital straw man watch their heads well we're not probate really you're not then make him defend how he has a standing if he's the mask of state to bring a claim against the mask of man. Because I'm higher and I say he's a fraud. There's no victim in this crime, except for the state me not paying a tithe the bail. So if I had 100,000 of you doing this with me, you know, that would be great. Because then if, if something happens to my claim, which it can't, I mean, I really got it secured, and then it's, it's going to, even if I die tomorrow, it's still there. I say that in my answer back to Stephen, that, it's eternal. It, can, it can't be voided or vitiated. It can only be settled by the course of the common law. When you claim propria personam standing, in propria personam, the, the case must be settled in the course of the common law. Well, they're not common law courts. So if they continue to settle it, they're de facto, and you have a claim in equity for frauds and deceits. Frauds being torts, deceits being trespasses upon... Uh, you know, claims or uh, frauds and claims in equity, trespasses. You know, you have those against them in international court. There are still international courts of claim. If you go and look at Title 28, it talks about private juris the private jurisdiction of the courts here. If you go and read Title 28, it'll tell you that in order to bring forth a claim in international law, you must first bring a cross claim, a counter claim, and a demur. It says this in Title 28. Go read the whole thing. It's kind of boring, but actually, you know, some of it's really interesting. But it tells you all this stuff's there. They're bound by the law too. They're getting you to surrender the law. So I'm not appearing as a man or a woman. When I go in there, I am coming to special appearance as the one sojourning in my regal retinue, bringing the law with me as the higher court standing in character, saying that everyone's in that room. You are reprobate and you are in violation of the law and you shall pay if you don't correct your course and comply with the law that they're obligated even within their statutes to comply with. They've even obfuscated by the administra by rewriting things by their administrative private committees where they their administrative private committees have renamed the courts, you know, to obfuscate their what they're lawful what they truly are. And they've rewritten certain sections of the statutory code saying where it says that all cases in this must be in compliance with the common law. All statutes must be in compliance with the common law. That's the grant created by uh, the 1946 Accord that says, it says that. So they have to be in compliance with the common law. Well, if I come in and I bring a claim in propria personam and demure and counterclaim and crossclaim, and that judge continues uh, as the unproven un 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 uh, trustee and this executor to do all that stuff, they're not in compliance with you, the statutes or the common law. And they are literally, officially, committing high treason. Not kind of officially. And if these guys keep going forward and committing high treason on a regular basis, that should tell you how powerful this occupation is. And 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 that these people are are aware of the fact that their lives are in danger, their life if it's just their livelihoods, it's that's an absurdity. I'm hoping that, you know, that they that their families are threatened or something. Because to have someone just operate the way they do for just money. So I'm assuming it's ignorance and or threat, dress and coercion. Because if they're doing it just for money, then they totally deserve to, you know, to be burned in hell for that reprobate behavior. So, especially when it comes to children. I mean, in this case that I'm speaking of about, you know, the kid that I'm trying to save, we have a judge, a judge, I use that term very loosely, a man who's been warned about his behavior. And in the last orders he sent out to family members who brought claim for, um, for custody, he didn't even sign it or seal it. They, these are literally letters with no signature and seal on them, which I understand is a pretty standard practice in Australia and in Britain. Uh, because, see, they don't have our law. They don't have the protections that we have of our great, great law of the creator, the common law, as we've Americanized it and founded it into the land. So, as I keep saying, we are the last bastion of freedom, guys, in every respect. We're the ones with the prudence, the law, the uh, power and and the uh, the wherewithal, the knowledge, the four cardinal virtues to bring forth what will reconcile and correct the ways, the evil ways 
of, of everybody that's being subjected to this evil construct all over the planet, at whatever that is, in this reality. So I don't know if that answers everything, but hopefully what you get from this series of status correction is that you must step outside their paradox. You cannot operate within the unlawful de facto state and gain anything in the law. You have to separate yourself from the de facto. And you have to do it as best you can. In the law, just the aversion of being lawful and not being in agreement with them and not accepting personal jurisdiction is supposed to be enough to protect you. It doesn't most times. Um, so the paperwork aside, know that even if you had, even if there was a list of, of the things that you um, need, what has to be done first is the republic lawful de jure government must be restored and the institutions must be restored. That is my goal. That is what should be the goal of everybody who wants to correct your status because we're all entangled. None of us will be free until all of us are free. And united we stand, divided we fall. And that's that motto. So namaste to everyone. I'm hopeful that you understand, that you comprehend, that we all must operate on behalf of all. I operate on behalf of all of you. Every pleading I do, I bring forth in the name of all free people of the Great Republic. Because I have to. That's the requirement in the law. I can't just settle for my personal benefit. If I did, I'd, I'd be off. I, I would have saved a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, in copying and time. That's not even counting my time. Um, you know, to bring all these claims forth. I, I'd be, you know, on vacation. I'd be doing all these nice little things. Instead, I spend all my time and my money on this hobby of trying to correct uh, the law and restore the republic. And the only way I know how is to bankrupt them because they are a corporation. They're, it's a large corporation who came to the Pope, who was actually hired by the Pope, to abrogate our debts. And since then, they've been operating fraud. I don't think that when I noticed the Pope that he knew that they were operating in de facto. And I think that that freaked him out, and that's why they, they've rescinded their protections in his monocopia, I can't say it, but in his edict where he removed their protections. That came after I notified them of the, the writ of, of uh, titles and nobility in the writ of conspiracy where I brought forth the proof that the titles and nobility were um, lawfully passed. The minute I sent that to the Pope, <clears throat> uh, yeah, very shortly thereafter, he revoked their, their protections. They are operating. All of these attorneys are no longer suretized by the Pope. They are no longer insured and indemnified. They no longer have a writ of marquee and the lawful capacity to come and steal from you. They're all, they're completely rogue now. Their masters above them have said no, and now I'm down here saying no. So they're in the middle. They're, they're very, they're all liable. Since his edict, the unions themselves, the Bar Union of Ohio, the American Bar Union, the British Bar Union, any bar union for any state or nation or whatever, the little fractures of the land, broken up into little pieces, that they have, that they have alligated their little territorial dominions. Those are all they are all personally liable now. Those unions are liable, and the men and women are not liable. They no longer have protections of a writ of marquee to come and, and do what they're doing. So they're squarely screwed <laughs> in the law. So I hope that helps. I love the letters, that the emails that people send me, and I definitely appreciate any comments on my, my uh, videos. Uh, I think open discourse uh, that's respectful and talks about the law and the way to help restore the republic is very welcome. I, it, I see, like I said, this is all for teaching, and I hope that something that I've learned and that I can convey to you, that I've conveyed to you, helps. So keep those coming. I definitely will bring more videos, um, particularly if people bring forth questions. I'll try to research those and bring forth evidences. There's a couple more videos I'll talk about, but I think that this will probably close the status correction, because basically the point of status correction is go to the higher law, step outside the paradox, become a moral man, and let's restore the republic and the institutions of the republic that actually affect law and claims and settlements so that we can all get remedy and relief. Because until we do that, it doesn't matter what you do with papers. It doesn't matter what you do um, in these foreign jurisdictional de facto forums. 
you are not going to get remedy in because you have no standing. They've taken it from you. You're a slave and you're dead. You're just dead to them. So, peace be with all of you. Namaste. I hope that you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of the day and that uh, together uh, we'll do some righteousness today and, and uh, feel all the love. I love you very much. Namaste.